Hey guys, it's Bub here, and this video we're taking a look at quite possibly the best Linux distribution for Windows users looking to switch. This is Zorin OS, specifically Zorin OS 17 Core, which is the free edition of Zorin OS. As far as I can tell, there are three editions of Zorin OS. Zorin OS Core, which is what we're looking at today. Zorin OS Lite, which is meant for computers up to 15 years old, or even older than 15 years, I believe. And then there's Zorin OS, I believe it's Pro, it's $49, and things of that nature. But it is nice that there is a free offering that is going to be good for most people. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Um, Zorin OS is really meant for those who are switching from Windows or Mac OS. It's designed to be user friendly for that group of people, which is why we're taking a look at it because next year Windows 10 support ends and many people have incompatible systems that will not support Windows 11. So this could be a very viable option for those Windows 10 users to jump ship and join the Linux community. It'll be very interesting to see what happens next year when Windows drops support. Will people make the switch and adopt Windows 11, or will the Linux or Mac community grow? Definitely something to keep a look at. All right, and here we are. We're gonna go ahead and install Zorin OS, and this just looks like your typical Ubuntu setup page, except it looks way more modern. Um, I do like this this kind of theme that we have going on here. I don't know how to describe it, like the colors, the font. I really do like it. It looks very modern. It is running a little slow, but that's probably because it's just running off of the live USB. We're going to avoid updates and avoid third-party software. Um, I do like that you don't have to participate in the census. Um, that is a very good privacy feature that I do like. Although I'm curious how that works. Does it send information to the Zorin OS developers once or more than once or things of that nature? Like, how does it tell them? Like, are they active users or just total installs? So our name, we're just going to call it Zorin. Uh, password, we'll make it Zorin. Uh, we'll log in. We'll make us enter our password. I do like the Active Directory button, but I believe that comes in like standard installs of Ubuntu now. And here we go. We are now copying over the files for Zorin OS, and then we'll be in the desktop. All right, the installation is complete. We're going to go ahead and restart the machine and boot into Zorin OS. I'm very excited because it's actually been quite a long time since I've had the chance to take a look at Zorin OS. Um, I think the last time I installed it was like 2015. So it's been nine years since I've seen. So I'm excited to see the development history um, and how it's really changed. But most importantly, how can this really be of use to uh, Windows users. So we're going to go ahead and log in with our very secure password of Zorin and we're going to change the screen resolution and then we're going to see how much different this actually is from Windows. All right, and here we are. So the first thing that comes up is actually a tour of Zorin OS, which is very convenient. Um, it'll walk you through the basic things, uh, especially like this. You can uh, change the appearance of Zorin. Um, which we'll actually take a look at that first because that is a very cool feature of Zorn. Um, it lets you know everything on how to, um, you know, how to do things. Again, very intuitive for a new user. The main feature of Zorin OS is to be able to switch between appearances. So this right now is what I would call the Windows appearance because it looks like Windows. You know, you got your start menu and your taskbar. Uh, it, this is just like a different level. Uh, it opens up, it's got different, um, you know, the icons are expanded. So this is kind of like a Windows Vista sort of style. This is what appears to be maybe Windows 11, Ubuntu. I mean, this is kind of like their own unique system here. You know, you got your centered, your centered bar, full screen applications. And then lastly, you have your Mac OS feel. Um, assuming that, you know, I can get the dock to load. Or there it is. So I mean that's it's similar to Mac OS in a way. Um, but because many people are going to be probably switching from Windows, we're going to leave it on the standard Windows feel and take a look at the operating system from here. Similar to what you'd find on Windows, I mean your all familiar taskbar is right here. You have your start menu, you have your task view, you have your web browser, files, and software, as well as your system tray and the calendar over here which the calendar does actually appear to do more than the Windows 11 calendar, which is pretty cool. 
take a look in the start menu, you can see it doesn't really look like Windows 10 or Windows 11, but rather it looks more like Windows Vista, where you have your kind of quick launch over here and your recent apps or pinned apps along with all apps. So by default, we can see that we have accessories, graphics, internet, office, sound and video system, tools and utilities. These are all categories that you can click on and view the apps inside of them. Uh, by default, it comes with the it comes with LibreOffice, um, which is a very popular uh, uh, office suite for Linux. And again, very intuitive. I mean, I've, I, I've used this before. I love it a lot. Taking a look at the pre-installed apps, we're just going to breeze through these pretty quick. Um, archive Manager, DVD Burner, Calculator Calendar, uh, Cheese, Disk Usage Analyzer and Disks, Document Scanner Viewer, Firefox, Evolution, uh, Mail Client, Fonts, Your Office Suite, uh, I don't actually know, oh, that's a remote desktop application, Rhythm Box, Your Software Updaters, Sound Recorders, Zorin OS Upgrader, uh, Windows App Support, Zorin Appearance, and Zorin Connect. Um, I am curious to see what this Windows app support is like. Is this just like Wine? Um, yeah, it just it looks like Wine Play on Linux. Yeah, this package installs Wine and Play on Linux. So again, taking a look around the UI, we already took a look at the Start menu here. I do actually like the Start menu, although compared to today, it does look kind of out of date. Um, I'm not sure how much I like a Start menu like this. This, I mean, your task view, you can see multiple desktops. You can search your desktops and things of that nature. By default, the web browser is Firefox, as most Linux distros come with. However, I will say that you are able to download Chrome because this appears to be based on Ubuntu. Next up is our file browser, which does is very simplistic, which is good for Windows users. Um, doesn't look too much like the Windows one. I would say it kind of reminds me more of a Mac one, but it's very simplistic. I mean, home, documents downloads music pictures videos in your trash I mean that's all your basic user really needs and then you have the software center where there's actually a lot more software in here than I imagine there's a whole bunch of software in here um, including a Nintendo switch emulator um, I'm not sure if this is a Zorin OS specific operating or uh, browser I'm not sure if this is a Zorin OS specific App Store, or if this is the Ubuntu App Store, um, but it even tells you what repository it comes from, um, which is very cool. I mean, this is a very, I love this UI. I mean, it tells you how much download, how much size is going to take, the permissions, age rating, and things of that nature. So I imagine this is not the Ubuntu App Store. Um, it's the GNOME App Store. Okay. Down here, we can see that we have our wired connection. I would assume wireless would be there. Uh, Bluetooth settings. Uh, you can change your power mode, balanced, or power saver, night light on or off, or dark mode on or off. That is, ooh, I like that. Um, you know, change the background color. I would assume it only does that with, you know, your dynamic backgrounds. Um, yeah, I do like that. But, yeah, let's leave it like that. Um, we can do a new folder, a new document, uh, select all, arrange icons, or arrange by, show desktop and files, show in terminal, change background, display settings, and settings. Let's take a look at settings and see how intuitive it is for your typical user. So here we have network settings, Bluetooth, uh, background or appearance settings, notification settings, uh, your search settings, multitasking. So you do have hot corners, which is something I do love on Mac OS. Um, applications, so application specific permissions and settings. Um, privacy. Your online account integrations sharing sound power displays mouse and keyboard mouse and touchpad rather uh, keyboard printers removal media color region accessibility users default applications date and time and about so with that this was just a very brief overview of the Zorin OS 17 core operating system definitely a very viable choice for Windows users looking to switch over especially Windows 10 users just because it is so familiar um, to them compared to Windows 11. With that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. And thank you everybody for 10,000 subscribers. I've been on YouTube for nine years and this is an incredible milestone that I am so excited to reach and it wouldn't be possible without every one of you. So thank you so much for supporting me along the journey. With that being said, 
See you all in the next one.